of trenches. A few feet down, they hit pay dirt. Ba period pottery was everywhere. When the pots were reassembled, their eccentric shapes and abstract decorations revealed an imaginative and enigmatic people. These unusual symbols appear to be a new language but so far, no one has been able to crack the code. Scores of rare Yangtze artifacts are stored in this vault at the Chongqing Art Museum. The security system is so secret, no film crew has ever been allowed inside until now. To conceal the array of sensors, Filming was confined to only one angle. Most of these objects have yet to be studied in detail. But one thing is known. The museum's growing collection proves Yangtze artisans were endowed with great skill and vision. Some 2,000 years ago, they created masterworks of porcelain. This Yangtze maiden is a world-class example of elegant simplicity. This ornate belt buckle depicts a rhinoceros, an animal experts say inhabited southern China centuries ago. Gold objects are rare in China. This exquisite bowl is over a thousand years old and almost solid gold. Here, a golden turtle chop. On the bottom, the owner's name. Pressed in ink, it was used to stamp important documents. A golden hair brooch, only a few inches long, is a masterpiece of workmanship. All in miniature, it glitters with exotic horses and their riders. On the back, a centuries-old birthday greeting. Bronze chimes may have been used to warn of enemy attacks. The Chinese valued the strength and versatility of bronze above all metals. Reassembled here in the Yangtze city of Wuhan, is a monumental set of 64 bronze bells unearthed in 1978. Made 2,400 years ago, this amazing instrument weighs almost three tons. The style of the instrument conforms to the fashions of north-central China. The melody is played on the top bells, the accompaniment on the giant bells below. Clearly, the Yangtze people were in contact with cultures hundreds of miles away. Once the Grand Canal was linked up with North China in the medieval period, the Grand Canal and the Yangtze River formed the greatest trading community in the world until the rise of capitalism in the 17th, 18th century. 4,000 years ago, the Egyptians were painting their tombs when the Ba people painted the curious symbols on their ceramics. And Yangtze artisans were already casting bronze weapons when the gladiators first appeared in Rome's Colosseum. To comprehend the potential loss of ancient treasures to the Three Gorges Dam, Professor Yu Wei Chao looked to the West for a comparable disaster. In southern Italy, the ancient city of Pompeii, which was destroyed by a volcano 2,000 years ago, can still be visited, even excavated today. However, the very soil in the Three Gorges area will be scattered and gone once it comes into contact with water from the flooding. 
It will be gone forever. It is an irreparable loss, and we must do our best to save it. The technique is as old as time, but time is running out at this site called Jungba. Situated on a small island in the middle of a Yangtze tributary, it can only be excavated during the dry season in spring. Strewn with ancient pottery and gravesites, Jungba holds valuable clues to how and when the Yangtze Valley was settled. But to find them, workers must remove hundreds of tons of soil by hand. <laughs> Funds run out in a few weeks, and by next year, this site may be underwater. It's an archaeological nightmare that haunts the entire Three Gorges area. The cost of building the dam is $28 billion, but less than 1% of the budget will go to saving cultural treasures. In advanced countries, that percentage could be between 3 to 5% of a construction budget. We originally hoped the Three Gorges area, because of its ancient culture and historical importance, would also recover 3 to 5%. While excavators race against time, the white swan sails toward the gorges. For Captain Tan, the river, its rocks and silt-laden waters evoke a more recent history. Beginning in the late 1700s, British traders flooded China with opium. When Chinese leaders attempted to shut the drug trade down, the opium wars exploded on the Yangtze. British gunboats quickly destroyed the Chinese fleet, opening the way for other European traders. The Chinese bitterly resented the invaders, but they made an exception for one man. A young English navigator named Cornell Plant fell in love with the Yangtze and its people. By 1920, he had plotted every turn in the river. His handbook on navigation would save the lives of countless foreign and Chinese sailors. Just before Jiling, the first of the Three Gorges, the White Swan passes a unique memorial at the town of Jintan. This obelisk was dedicated to Cornell Plant on his death. It's the only surviving monument to a foreigner on the Yangtze. The inscription was defaced during the Cultural Revolution, but the old people still remember the words. Father of the Upper River. This simple column will vanish, along with the entire town of Jintan. When the dam comes, and the flood reaches its ultimate height of 577 feet. Even though the water is still years away, the people have been ordered to tear down their homes and businesses now. Eventually, 1.3 million will be uprooted. <laughs> Who's in Tan will overlook its submerged former self. Stranded in one of the poorest areas of China, few inhabitants of Jintan can afford even a snapshot of their doomed homes. Events once linked to street corners and courtyards, weddings, births, and deaths, the history of an entire town will slip out of Sight, like a great photo album lost to a flood. Hello. 
Captain Tan and the White Swan now pass through Jilin Gorge. A 30-mile mile. The right side, local farmers singing the local song for us. You may enjoy. On that trip, his boat was dashed to pieces. Seventeen steamships met their end here between 1900 and 1945. The vessels fell victim to large boulders choking the channel. The deadliest was known seductively as Come to Me. Put inside the bigger cave. It's just a coffin, another ancient coffin put inside. The Yangtze is the wellspring of Chinese mythology. The ancients thought its jagged peaks resembled gods and heavenly guardians. The great beauty of the river lured generations of poets and mystics to the magnificent temples that dot the hills around the three gorges. Saving less fortunate temples has become the daunting task of Chinese architects. Downriver from Fengdu is the magnificent temple called Shibuze, or Stone Precious Temple. The temple's most breathtaking feature is a towering pagoda. 135 feet high, it is the tallest wooden building in China. Located on a rocky outcrop, the pagoda's internal staircase winds upward for 12 stories. The builders use no nails, the structure was lashed into holes carved into the cliff face. At the summit of the pagoda is a Buddhist temple active until the Cultural Revolution in 1966. To survey the river from the highest story is to look back in time. While the dam will engulf the town below, Officials hope to rescue the complex with an ambitious project. This is how the temple appears today. To save it, plans have been drawn to build a massive wall around the base of the pagoda. If the necessary funds can be raised, the temple will become a virtual island within the Three Gorges Reservoir. Eighty miles downriver is another monumental challenge. Zhang Fei Temple commemorates the period between 220 and 265 AD, when three separate states ruled the Yangtze River area. Zhang Fei was a heroic general in the state called Shu. Zhang helped purge the land of corruption, but was ultimately murdered by his treasonous officers. In the 1960s, Mao's Red Guards ransacked some of China's most sacred places. Not only was Zhang Fei's temple threatened, but also its collection of some of the greatest calligraphy of the Yangtze. Such historical treasures suffered damages and destruction during the Cultural Revolution. So to save these cultural relics, intellectuals here wrote Chairman Mao's quotations on the reverse sides. No Red Guard would dare destroy the thoughts of Mao, so the priceless tablets of Zhang Fei Temple survived. This 156-meter line indicates where the water level will lie in just five short years, unless millions of dollars can be raised to rescue the temple from the reservoir. Uh, from the
wait, no, that's not allowed if you're not going to be in the video. Oh! No, 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 you can't film. Near the western edge of Jiling Gorge, a song echoes through another treasure of the Yangtze. It laments the passing of the poet Kui Yuan. His works have been compared to a host of Western Romantic poets, from Shakespeare to William Blake. High above the city of Zigwe, this splendid temple was created in his honor. Standing some 300 feet above the water, it's hard to imagine the rising waters will reach this high, but they will. The strategies to save the Yangtze temples are daring and dramatic, to say the least. Chinese engineers are planning to take the Zhang Fei and Kui Yuan temples apart. Piece by piece, wall by wall, they will be reassembled on a higher ground, a feat that demands extraordinary skill and determination. My own feeling is that the temples, uh, particularly the Zhang Fei Temple and the Chuyuan Temple, which they do have plans to move, uh, probably are a little bit overly, overly ambitious. Uh, given the logistics of that area, there are no major roads, uh, river traffic is uneven. It'll be very difficult to take apart those temples and then reconstruct them within the time limits that they've set up. Other temples will be lost forever. During periods of drought, the waters of the Yangtze recede low enough to reveal an extraordinary sight. This rare archival footage of White Crane Ridge documents a bar of sandstone covered with stylized carvings of fish. The eyes of the fish mark low tide. They were carved in the 8th century over a period of 72 years. Additional inscriptions provide a detailed record of times of drought. A clue to the whims of ancient climate, they span a thousand years. But soon the tide will ebb no more at White Crane Ridge. While his passengers sleep, Captain Tan charts a course from Zigwe to their next destination. Upriver from Jiling Gorge is Wu Gorge. 25 miles long, it overlaps the borders of Hubei and Sichuan provinces. By lunchtime, the white swan has tied up just outside the gorge to take on fuel. Further down the pier, a chartered boat has arrived to pick up a package from the past. Excavators from the Jungba site are sending another shipment to the museum in Chongqing. This crate is filled with ceramic artifacts. Over the past week, work at the site has shifted into high gear. There's been a breakthrough in a mystery that has long puzzled archaeologists. None of the pottery at Jungba is the same age. Instead, it spans thousands of years, suggesting the site was continuously occupied. The buildings of one culture were constructed on the ruins of another, making Jungba a layer cake of Yangtze history. This is a major site compared with other sites in the Three Gorges. It can be dated back around 4,500 years through the Neolithic age. The remains here include house foundations.
这位漂亮，这位美女啊，就是今天晚上的黄世哲 M V。然后还带了一杯我们的酒吧店。